Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for a hot topic, and this one says expedite action on recapitalization, CBN tells the banks. Now, joining me to have a conversation is Bolaon Olujede, a public affairs analyst. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Nice to be on the program. Lovely. Okay, so um, the CBN governor, Kadiso, had come out to um, talk about recapitalization on banks. Now, um, if we look at history, the last time we had this recapitalization was in 2005 when Charles Saludo was still the um, governor of CBN at the time, and it moved from $2 billion to $25 billion. So that's just for some um, precedence. But now we're seeing the current governor of the CBN talking about this and saying we need to expedite action on recapitalization. What do you think about this and what do you think the impact on banks will be um, if this goes on? Okay, um, I, I, I like the uh, information, the background information you provided. Yeah. So we move from 2 billion to 25 billion as yeah. the minimum capital for a national license. Of as at the time when we moved to 25 billion, that 25 billion was about 200 million dollars. Today, that same $25 billion mm. uh, is probably about $50 billion. Mm. So it has gone from that $200 million that it was to about $50 million. So something has happened to what used to be uh, what, what, what was considered as an adequate capital for a national license. Mm. That value has eroded over the years by virtue of the depreciation of the Naira. Yeah. So... If we want the banking as a system, the banking system to be able to deliver on um, the, oh, we want to be a one trillion economy mm -hmm. by this year and all those kind of stuff, it is right about time we consider recapitalization, especially um, with, with some of the uh, banks that we currently have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so what's, what's the best way? Because I know that inflation has taken a toll on the economy. And just like you rightly said, the value of that um, $25 billion is not the same as it was in dollars um, as of today. So what are the measures that could actually even help these banks for the recapitalization? Because I know it's not easy to go from $2 billion to $25 billion. And whatever the, um, the rate is going to be at the moment, we don't know what it's going to be. But how can, what are the measures or policies that would actually even help these banks? Well, <clears throat> um, it, 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 there, there could be uh, what I would call, you know, people think because of the economic circumstances, maybe um, the timing might not be right, but that is not true. There is so much money in mm. this economy. If any of them should come to the market, um, they will get people who will put money in there. So they could actually approach the capital market to raise money and they will get investors who will bring in money and buy the shares and they can show up the capital of those banks. Um, it's, it's, it's been a long time and this will also help even the capital market. It will create a lot of buzz in the, in the capital market. Um, we, will just, we will just be taken back to the years of Soludo when a lot of capitalization of this bank happened. Mm. When you create that, the, the, uh, uh, the NGX, the equity market generally, will receive a lot of activities and it's good for the economy that that should happen. Yeah. Now, there are also, among these banks, some of them already have very good uh, 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 reserves. They have the shareholders' fund is already very robust. Mm. All they will need to do is to restructure that shareholder area to meet whatever is the new threshold that they are desiring. So if you look at some shareholders fund of some of the banks, it's already, I know a bank that is about 1.5 trillion naira shareholders fund. So it's not talking, that kind of a bank is not talking about 25 billion or 50 mm -hmm. billion or mm -hmm. 200. It is already at 1.5 trillion in shareholders fund. So all it, require, all it will require for that kind of a bank is to move things around and capitalize. Maybe you want to go, uh, you want to issue uh, bonus shares from mm -hmm. your reserves and all those kind of things. But it's doable and it is in the interest of not just the banking system, but also the economy to create activities um, around fundraising by, by banks in the capital market. Mm. 
so I mean, you've spoken about a bank that has you know trillions, but I'm sure there are some that maybe they might not be able to meet that. And I remember during the time of Soludo, you saw a lot of um, mergers and acquisition happen. So is this something that might happen, whereby it's going to be the top players that will be here, and then some others who cannot meet up will just have to leave? Uh, well, that's an extreme situation. Um, what that Soludo event did was to create a healthier environment. Mm. So today, we have healthier banks than what used to be. Yeah. Um, all this non-performing loan ratio is still reasonably low. Um, and, and most of the banks are doing very well. That is the reality of what we have right now. However, in an extreme case in which there are banks... Who, who are unable to meet a new threshold, definitely the room for mergers and acquisition will always be there. Mm. But in my observation of the numbers of the banks today, uh, most of them, if they come to the market, they will be able to raise funds and show up their capital. It, it is something uh, that will be in the long interest. Of the like, like you rightly observed, those, who are already, those banks that are already big and have the shareholders fund um, might not panic. But there are smaller ones who would definitely need to raise those capital. Mm -hmm. Can those capital be raised under the prevailing conditions? My answer will be yes. Because while there might be inequality and economic hardship uh, generally, there is still a lot of money in the economy. And mm -hmm. when the investment opportunities come, they will move mm -hmm. to those investments. So since we're talking about raising capital, um, what are some strategies that these banks um, can just you know, implore to to ensure that they meet the targets, whatever that target is going to be? I think the, I think the banks need to start looking um, at their own books mm. uh, before those uh, thresholds are set. Yes. And begin to reassess and take steps that will position them to be able to approach the market for fundraising. Um, they also do not have to necessarily, I mean, they could do private placements, they could do, you know, what is important is that they have to start considering what options are available for them to show up their capital and begin to prepare their institution towards approaching those options that will work, that they believe will work for them. Of course, the capital market is always there. You want to come to it, you can, you can, you can come to capital. Market. If you don't want to do that, you want to do something in the private uh, placement space, um, you can also do that. What is important is to be able to raise uh, uh, the capital. So I, I expect that most of them are already looking at what they are going to do because it appears Mr. Cardoso uh, is very serious about recapitalization of, of, of banks. So um, I'd like to know what can be, what can pose as a challenge, you know, for this, especially when the threshold is being set. Um, what can pose as a, uh, as a challenge for these banks and how would it even affect, you know, the... The, the banks with their customers as well because I, I, I mean if this happened for instance during the time of um, Soludo you were hearing people saying some banks folded up and their monies were stuck so how would this even affect the customers in this case? They will not it's, it, it's not something that will have any negative effect on the mm. customers um, as, as it were what it's, it's a different story when banks liquidate from when banks merged. Mm. Most of what we had during the Soludo exercise were mergers and acquisitions on bigger banks swallowed up the smaller ones to become, you know, uh, 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 to meet the threshold that was set. Uh, in, in, in the course of that, depositors' monies were safe. Uh, in this particular instance, too, the threat, there are no threats to depositors. Mm. Rather, what we will have would be banks that had more capital to deploy. Banks with better capacity to form the expectation of this economy as according to the trajectory that the government is, is looking at and, and, and what the private sector is also looking at. We must be able to fund the economy. And, you know, looking outside there, waiting on the international banks to come and do this and do that for us, it's not a, it's not a sustainable uh, approach to funding an economy because they will choose and pick what they want to fund. But where we have our own banks with internal capacity, 
to provide us funding, then we will be the one choosing and picking what we want. For example, you might have a lot of international banks who are saying, I don't want to do oil and gas because I think fossil fuel are going out of uh, vogue. Hmm. But if our own banks internally have the capacity, then they probably will fund those uh, uh, projects. And we won't have to be waiting uh, on, on international people because we do not have the capacity. So it's, it's a capacity enhancing thing. It is positive and it is doable. Mm. Okay, so how do you foresee the um, competitive landscape, you know, within the banking sector, especially when this whole um, recapitalization mandate is, you know, being given? Uh, what's going to be the competitive landscape for all of the banks? Well, um, even as we are, we have the banks that you call the uh, uh, tier one banks. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is, you know, you, you know where you belong. Tier one, tier two, there's even tier three. Mm. There are also some banks that are living on the fringes. I, I deliberately would not uh, mention it. Um, maybe it's an opportunity for those banks to recapitalize or get absorbed into the bigger one. And, and you know, size or scale is always uh, an advantage. And people, the big banks, will throw their weight around when it comes to uh, capacity. But you cannot, you will also, within that same industry, have smaller banks who are more nimble. Uh, they are not. They are. They don't have the the huge capacity of those large banks. But they have chosen certain niche markets, and they are nimble. Their approval process is easier. Their processes are simpler, and they are able to do things faster than some of the behemoths. So, people will pick and choose their niche based on your on your on your competence and your capacity and deploy. So the competitive landscape, of course, will change because you have the domineering big tier one banks who are always there. But then there will always be room for the mid tier and then the smaller players to do what they know how to do. You can choose the market where you uh, focus and, mm. and be able to uh, make money as a bank. Okay, so in choosing those markets, uh, um, knowing where, wherever you are, whether you're in the tier one, tier two, tier three, um, for the implementation, the successful implementation of this, especially when the threshold is set, um, what role does regulatory bodies have to play in this to ensure that everything is by the books and how it's supposed to be? Well, um, we've been here before. Um, there is institutional memory mm. of how we have done it in the past. Um, so the regulators, of course, typically uh, um, might start with moral suasion in which we're, they're not even setting targets. They're not saying this is the minimum this and this is the target date when this must happen. So they're just saying, look, you guys need to do this. And they expect that um, the institutions within the system will, will, will begin to move along the line of this moral suasion. The next step, of course, is to say, okay, we're not getting enough traction from just encouraging you to do this recapitalization. Therefore, we are setting thresholds and we are setting target dates within which this must happen. So once that is rolled out, uh, then activity gets in top gear. Um, no, nobody wants to be found on the other side of the regulator. And that is when we will begin to see banks move actively. We'll begin to see uh, some of them come into the capital market. But while we are still at that position where these targets and dates and thresholds have not been set, it is the right time for the banks to start their own internal preparation. Look at your books, look at your balance sheet, decide where you think you want to go, what kind of fund you want to raise. You know, of course, most of them will be uh, equity or tier one capital. Um, and then decide how exactly you want to raise this fund. You have some uh, major guys you want to call in to just bring some money on a private placement basis. Are you approaching the market uh, for for fund? Are you coming to the capital market? Um, so th those those are the kind of things that will start to happen to prepare the ground while the moral situation uh, uh, still reigns supreme. But over time, it will move beyond moral situation. There will be a regulatory prescription exact material prescription as to date, as to uh, minimum capital, and, and, and all those things. And, and that, that, that would be when we begin to see the relativities.
All right. So um, the CBN governor, Yemi Kadeso, you know, spoke about servicing the one trillion, um, you know, economy. And I'm sure that's the reason why he has spoken about expediting, <coughs> excuse me, expediting action on the recapitalization. But in your opinion, um, what long term benefits, like potential long term benefits, do you think um, this would have, especially with our economy? Infrastructure is one. Um, the, the financial system must be able to finance our own infrastructure. Uh, at least be a significant contributor to the financing of our infrastructure. Um, so you, you, you look at uh, what we have done in the past um, using other people's funds, World Bank, IFC, mm -hmm. uh, China, Exim, uh, all those foreign funds. They're saying, look, yes, foreign fund is good. Uh, they could be more cheaper than what we, are, we have in house. But that we also need our domestic banks to develop that capacity to contribute a lot more to infrastructure, to financing infrastructural development in this economy. That is one area where we will benefit tremendously. Uh, then when you talk of industrialization, um, mega industries require a lot of money. And anywhere you look at those kind of financing, uh, you might pick, say, a Dangote refinery. That is a huge, huge project. Now, the capacity to finance more of such projects, if there are to be projects of the quantum of Dangote refinery, if 10 of them were to come on board today, are we going to be able to put together the funding? Those are the kind of questions that we must be asking and those are the kind of answers that the enhanced capacity of the banking system will be able to provide answers to mm. all right um so i guess in your own opinion this is a good idea um the banks need to start to look into their books and you know just get ready for the recapitalization right? i think it's a fantastic idea Let's, let's start preparing. The market is waiting when you want to raise funds. Come to the market, the market, capital market. Generate goals on the capital market. It is also very good for the economy. Nigerians to bring money to the capital market. There's a lot of activities going on there. And then um, there, there is a trickle-down effect of those activities on the economy. In fact, it could even uh, be, of, be of interest to foreign investors, portfolio investors who will bring money because of that buzz that is being created on the, on the capital, in the capital market. Exactly what I wanted to ask, because um, my question next was going to be, would foreign investors be able to come into um, our country? I know the president has been moving around looking for foreign investors to come into Nigeria, um, but would this actually pose as a good opportunity for them to come in? And then also for the common man, um, we know if inflation is at an uh, all-time high, does this also affect that? Would that you know, help the economy whereby inflation is going to be Reduced. Okay, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit complex, but then um, what we have seen, for example, with the prevailing monetary policies is how it has affected the dollar. Mm. Uh, someone was offering dollar to me yesterday at 1,380. I, um, I was told that it's traded below that uh, mm. in some of the markets yesterday in Nigeria. When I think about the fact that that same dollar was 1,900 at some point a few weeks ago, um, it shows we are moving, we are, we are taking certain right steps in the right direction. Mm. Now, the, the lagging effect of those actions will start to come in um, over, over the next few months. You see, when the manufacturers, for example, or even importers are making new orders, they are going to be now be making it under a much reduced uh, uh, FX, FX exchange rate. And that will dovetail into reduced prices and reduced inflation. What I, however, do not want us to lose sight of is that the problem is not just about monetary policy. Mm. We would like to see this being complemented on the fiscal side of things. If we're going to deal sustainably with the issue of inflation in this country. The monetary policy will do its part, but it has to be complemented by actions 
interventions from the fiscal side of things. Hopefully, uh, these two sides of things work together and we can begin to feel the impact on the, to the, uh, by the common man on the, on the, on the road. Well, that's the prayer. We hope that the common man can also um, benefit from this. I mean, if it's, a good, or if it's such a fantastic idea, like you've said, that hopefully trickles down and everybody is happy at the end of the day. We want to say thank you for coming. It was lovely having a conversation with you and, you know, just sharing your valuable contributions. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. All right, we've been speaking with Bola Olujedi. He's a public affairs analyst, and we've been talking on the topic um, where the CBN has well told banks that they need to expedite action on recapitalization. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us.